this is the beginning of um, of my favorite part of the of the morning, the first morning, as some of you know. Um, and the reason is that I think we have been tracking some sort of deep shift in the structure of public education that almost no one else has been speaking about. And the reason I think it's important is because it does affect uh, profoundly in the long run kind of the way one does this work and in some senses access to the pressure points, if you will, um, as this thing realigns itself. And it clearly is going to be realigned again in the next six months because of the national policy uh, directives that we're going to get out of the new piece of legislation. All right? But I always begin, as many of you know, uh, with the kind of the classic kind of older structure that we all lived and worked in. And the reason I began there is because in some senses it is where we basically, the unions particularly, built a good deal of their structure and their uh, voice. And um, the reason was that the organized labor group, the senior administration, uh, and the board were the three anchors, if you will, defined in the law uh, with a major responsibility for the work of this enterprise. And um, this structure basically made a lot of sense for all sorts of reasons. The first and the foremost, without going into much detail, because we've been through this many times before, this board is representing some sort of community out here. And, and it is a very interesting experimentation in democracy. It is five, seven, nine people who are not particularly skilled in uh, public education or education in general. All right? They are citizens uh, of this community, however small or however large. Uh, this can be a community of three or four hundred souls, and this can be a community of four million. This model has basically been the model that has carried us up until uh, very, very recently, probably the beginning of 2001, when No Child Left Behind calls the question not directly at this, obviously, because there was much too much kind of intelligence that went into it, shrewdness, if you will, all right? It would have been very dangerous to call the question of local control. What got called by No Child Left Behind was the question of both kind of quality, if you will, and accountability. And there was a good deal of early data, early in the sense of 10 years ago, that the quality issue was in serious jeopardy in terms of international competition, and that it was clearer and clearer that we had actually no measures at all to tell us comparatively how we were doing, not only over against other competitive nations and so forth, but we had no idea basically how we were doing uh, district to district, state to state, or for that matter, uh, site to site. Um, the best we had were grades and ranking class that were nearly uh, impossible to compare. Right? What happened is going in this door, right, No Child Left Behind begins to say, we are re going to require, because in some senses, don't forget, the real role right, uh, that's responsible for education in the country is not the federal government but the state, even though we were in some senses settled by communities and built this as our regular model of delivery, the state had been very, very quiet historically. What happens to No Child Left Behind is the feds, basically using a minimal amount of money, require the states to step up to what we all know then transpired over the next few years, which is to say, in the name of quality and accountability, they require clear goals or measures they did not have to come from anybody else, but Arkansas had to have clear goals. Missouri had to have clear goals. And they had to have measures. And they were given a couple of years to establish those measures. Most of them were caught almost absolutely unprepared. And then came, in some senses, the curveballs, not, I think, foreseen by anyone. Out of kind of corporate America comes, if you will, not only measures, but then be when, once the baseline is set, the forced, if you will, improvement. So that whatever you have established against your goals for your baseline measurements, you are then required to start making all right, 
provide significant improvement each year and uh, with a goal set out in a certain future period of 100% uh, and so forth. The other pieces that were very, very powerful were the forcing of subgroup measurements. And in some senses, that was almost forbidden up until 2001. And all of a sudden, we break this out by all sorts of issues, including race, including income, and so forth and so on, including language background. And this basically lets out of the box things that everybody knew around the gap itself between different children, uh, based on race, based on uh, income, and so forth and so on. So you get this very interesting kind of powerful redesign. But that's not the piece that, in some senses, we've concentrated on here. The piece that I kept trying to bring our attention to was the fact that in the process, all right, several things begin to happen. First of all, the federal government all right, becomes enormously active with respect to a piece of legislation that changes everything. And they do so through the only tools they have, which are to require the states to step up. The locals, if you will, the district structure remains the same, although I'll come back and ask fundamental questions about that. All right. It puts enormous all right, stress because of the accountability on the local school site. And for at least the next four or five years, all right, until the Obama administration changed, this was in some senses a growing powerful force. All right, and so also was this, forcing of this, all right, with a good deal of language around how each individual school was doing, particularly based on the forced improvement language right, and the march towards 2000x and 100%. What happens in the change of administration, much to the surprise of almost everybody in this room and their organizations, all right, perhaps even for Joe, all right, is that in some senses this actually got even stronger with an enormous amount of one-time only money it gets framed in a competitive model that's never been true historically in educational policy, particularly we have all sorts of writers on it, all right, that further all right, push the states out into fundamental redesign. All right, but in addition, put even more, if you will, pressure on right, the school site and added all sorts of language around failing schools the bottom 5% right, in, in the language of a piece of legislation. All right. And lastly, in the last three to four years, with this issue of teacher evaluation, which we picked up again and again in here, stop and think about the fact that this moves with teacher evaluation not to the school site. All right. It moves to classrooms. This data. All right, will basically now be, be collected by teacher, by students. 